Okay, today it's the TRX50 AI top motherboard. I really probably should have reviewed this much sooner. Gigabyte was gonna send one and then I think my contact disappeared or whatever. This one comes from Micro Center, but really it comes courtesy of viewers like you. This is the most returned and most misunderstood Threadripper motherboard that exists. It's actually pretty good, but there's some features of it that are not well explained. So, hence today's video. Well, it comes in a big heavy box. Dual 10 gig LAN, oh that's fancy. Yeah, it's like $900 from Micro Center. Does it make sense to buy this? $900 from Micro Center? Uh, let's, 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 let's get into it, let's get into it. In the box, you've got a lot of stuff, we'll get to that. This is the motherboard. This is what you get out of the box. It has four X16 slots, and if I open the door here, we also have four Gen 5 NVMe. Not so fast there. It's three Gen 5 if it's a 7000 or a 9000 series processor X. If it's a pro processor, you get the fourth one. And our X16 slots, they're always 16 lanes, but this bottom slot, this could be PCIe 4.0 by 16 if you are using a 7000 series non-pro CPU. If you are using a 9000 series non-pro CPU, then the bottom slot is actually capable of PCIe Gen 5. So you have four X16 PCIe Gen 5 slots. And then it starts to get a little bit more interesting in terms of pricing and everything else because, you know, $900 for a TRX50 motherboard is not out of the realm of unreasonable. There are other boards that are like that. Gigabyte has the ROD, which is like $600, dollars $700. Tariffs and like, like the pricing has fluctuated like crazy, not just because 9000 series Threadrippers just launched, but because of stuff going on in the US. So, I, you know, you're going to have to recalculate the pricing. Like the pricing is probably not going to make sense. But enough of you have purchased motherboards and used our affiliate links that we were able to buy one of these because this is also the most returned motherboard. And the number one reason, it has eight memory slots. The eight memory slots will only work when you use a pro C CPU in this. This is a thing from AMD. You can use a pro CPU in any TRX50 motherboard, ROD, TRX50 AI top, whatever. No one would actually do that. Like I can't think of any reason on earth that it makes sense to do that, except maybe with this board. This board is a little cheaper than a WRX90 motherboard, and depending on what your goals are, using a pro CPU in here will actually unlock all eight DIMMs so that they can all work and that might make sense. Cause Gigabyte, Gigabyte's WRX90 motherboard is more server oriented and not overclocking oriented. And this board also has a fair, uh, fairly competent power delivery system. So, you know, we can get 850, 900 watts into the CPU, no problem. I think you could push a thousand watts on this platform without too much trouble. It does require active cooling. There are some fans hidden in here that you can see, but it's a reasonable, uh, power delivery situation. Now at Computex, I saw some motherboards that looked like they were gonna be Threadripper refresh motherboards, but I, it remains to be seen if those motherboards will actually go into production because they didn't launch with Threadripper TRX50, but the PCIe lane configuration is different between 7,000 and 9,000 series non-pro CPUs. And I thought it was super, super interesting that this bottom slot, which can be PCIe Gen 5 if you have a pro CPU, is also now PCIe Gen 5 if you have a non-pro 9000 series CPU. So like this as a chariot for your 32 core CPU, especially if you're gonna run 16 high demand devices. Yeah, maybe it makes sense. And also the power delivery here for the GPUs, each one of these slots can consume up to 75 watts. And so the design of this board is to wire all of these slots to be able to deliver 75 watts to each GPU. That's why there's two GPU style power inputs here to deliver 300 watts up to uh, power through all of these PCIe slots. And that's why it would be important to connect those. There's also the release mechanism for the GPU. You can push down on the button and you see it will release the lock for the primary uh, slot. It also in the manual says for the GPU to install in this slot. I've already been using this board with uh, seven and 9,000 series CPUs 
it's actually a great little board. We have two USB 2 headers, two USB 3.0, five gigabit headers, a type C header, which has got plenty of clearance for the back of your GPU. It has four SATA ports. There's your external audio header, two addressable RGB headers at the bottom edge. We also got five four pin fan headers at the bottom edge. Along the front edge of the motherboard, there is a microphone input. You can use the microphone input for the system to detect the sound of its own fans. You can set up the system to always be as quiet as possible and use that as an audio feedback in order to control the sound of the fans. Like how loud is the system? Oh, let's throttle down a little bit because the system is too loud. As a practical matter, I don't think you'll really run into the system is too loud, let's throttle down. But it is interesting that it has that as, as a, we will run the fans as fast as possible below a certain audio threshold. It, you know, you gotta give it to Gigabyte, they're thinking outside the box for innovation. We also have power and reset and a diagnostic readout in the upper right hand corner of the board. We've got another addressable RGB header, a 5050 RGB header, and four pin fan headers galore at the top edge of the board. In terms of the included accessories in the box, this board can be configured in a dual power supply mode, and in that case, there are two extra 12 volt inputs for the CPU 12 volt connections from your second power supply. That, that might be good for running, you know, four RTX 6000s. I mean, you could do it on this board, but again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really recommend that. Two RTX 6000s on this platform makes the most sense. Our test bench is set up with ASRock's Tai Chi 1600 watt power supply. That will run this board no problem and has been running this board no problem with dual RTX Pro 6000s, 600 watt cards, plus this platform is another, you know, 350 to 500 watts if you do a, a, just a mild overclock and that power supply keeps up like a champ. That power supply also has thermal monitoring built into the end of the 12V2 power connectors for, from the NVIDIA side. So that's one way to mitigate the med melting power connector thing is by having temperature sensors, safety temperature sensors built into the power supply that will shut the power supply down in case of temperature issues. For the rear IO, we have our Wi-Fi 7 antenna connector. We have two USB 3.2 ports lined out of microphone. Those are analog. We have our display port in and our USB 4 plus DP output, another USB-C output. This comes from our Thunderbolt 4 controller. It is Thunderbolt compatible, I should say, but it is our Thunderbolt interface and AMD is really getting that right nowadays with the software and driver enablement all the way down to the platform. We have dual 10 gigabit adapters and we've got another four USB 3.2 ports. It also has a, a substantial metal backplane and look at this. This is obviously designed for OEMs and system builders that ship with GPUs installed because every single one of the X16 slots is mechanically fastened to the backplane. Gigabyte has engineered this for longevity and durability and giant honking graphics cards or heavy you know, 5090s or RTX Pros or whatever you happen to have installed in there. So also in the box, you get a really nice Wi-Fi antenna that's movable, Gigabyte Rapid Connect front panel connector, your microphone that I was mentioning before, some SATA cables, your power supply Y cable in case you do want to run dual power supplies, you got to use that adapter cable in order to do it. You've also got some external temperature sensor inputs that you can use for the onboard control of your fans. The fan control on the Gigabyte board, like if you go into the BIOS and you manipulate what's going on with the fans, it's very good. You can configure your fan profile completely on the board and let it be handled on the board outside the operating system, which is great if you're gonna run Linux or something like that. You've also got extra thermal pads in here because Gigabyte knows that everybody is gonna change everything around with all of your M.2. And so it's very, very nice to see them include those kinds of accessories on a $900 motherboard. Oh, and in case you're wondering about the 10 gig chipset, that is uh, Marvell. It's the Marvell 10 gigabit chipset. It's pretty well supported at this point in both Linux and Windows. I also like that they have mechanically fastened the 10 gig adapters to the rear heatsink assembly with the fan, which means that it's gonna get ample cooling. This is surprisingly something that has not really been well figured out on every single TRX50 and WRX90 motherboard that, that exists out there. Sometimes you can get in, into situations where in certain cases, depending on the airflow configuration in the case, your LAN chipset will overheat and the, that manifests as losing connection for a second or two and then regaining connection or a loss of bandwidth if you're paying attention to the bandwidth because the 10 gig connection will drop. It, it doesn't actually change the link speed, but it changes the speed at which the network card can communicate. So you'll have a 10 gig link 
but you might only be able to copy stuff at like 250 megabytes per second or something like that. And then when you actually hit it pretty hard, it'll lose link as it goes completely offline for a second or two because it's running at that maximum temperature. This board is one of the best designed boards to deal with that of all of the boards, even the Aero D and the, because pretty much all the TRX-15, WRX-90 motherboards have 10 gigabit and depending on the system configuration, this, this board, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your case configuration is. It doesn't matter what your airflow is. It's good. For the, to be clear, the other boards, they're basically fine, but you need a good 140 millimeter uh, rear exhaust fan. And sometimes top fans um, can be more problematic for Threadripper type designs, like front to back airflow, and especially front to back you know, tower cooling, like from Arctic, make the most sense. Uh, if you're not gonna go AIO, Silverstone has the king champion of AIOs for platforms like this. And that also helps with memory cooling as well. The other design thing that I really like that Gigabyte did is that the airflow over the dims, there's not really a ton of obstructions here. And so that really does actually help with airflow over the dims. Now I also thought that maybe it would be a little bit more problematic in terms of speed. Maybe you'll have a harder time getting dims that are farther away from the socket to work. That's valid electrical signal reasoning. That could be a thing. It was not the case on this board. Uh, the, our V-Color 7200 and 8000 kits were completely fine on this board. And that's true whether we're using four or eight of them. A couple people on the forum expressed concerns like, hey, if you've got the fancy V-Color kit with the built-in heat spreaders, isn't it more problematic to get airflow between the dims because of the heat spreaders? And I can see that, that yeah, that could be a thing in some configurations. It was not a thing in, in any of our configurations, but that could be a thing in some configurations. For like the 32 core Pro CPU with eight sticks of memory, if you were gonna run eight sticks of memory, this wouldn't be an unreasonable board. If you were gonna run the 64 or 96 core CPU, it's only $200 more generally to get a WRX90 motherboard, which is gonna have way more slots and more features, a couple hundred bucks. Rounding error in the total cost of the system. So. Yeah, but if you're looking for an open box deal or return or somebody bought one of these motherboards and then they returned it because why don't all eight memory channels work on my non-pro processor, which happens a lot, according to a little birdie in the retail channel that, that told me, um, you can get an amazing open box or return deal on one of these because somebody didn't bother to read the manual or believe what the manual said or believe some rando on the internet. Me. All right, that's been a quick look at the TRX50 AI Top from Gigabyte. It's a solid motherboard, I like it. It's a little quirky with its quirky features, but quirky is a you problem, not a problem of the board. You just gotta read and understand it. And how wild is it the bottom slot is PCIe 5 by 16 with the 9000 series processor, but not the 7000. Ah, I'm one of those level one has been a quick look at the AI Top TRX50 from Gigabyte. Good job, Gigabyte. I'm signing out, you can find me in the level one forums. If you have any questions, something I missed, something I didn't cover, all right, I'm signing out, I'll see you there.